What is up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Wes Bjornsson here, representing Country Crush. <laughs> Welcome to The Grip, where we talk about arm wrestling, powerlifting, and strongman. Let's get into it. <sighs> What's up, guys? So today we're going to be talking about something that you should be doing with your team, that you're probably not doing with your team. And that thing is playing King of the Table. King of the Table gets a bad rep. People complain that it's too much work, that it's overworking or something, or that you're going to get hurt, etc, etc. Um, listen, you're wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. So, um, let's get into that. Now, for those that don't know what King of the Table is and don't know what I'm talking about, um, this is King of the Table. It's a game where the strongest guy, um basically arm wrestles the whole team over and over until somebody beats him. That's the best way to play uh, in practice. You can do the same game in tournament, um, but I think its tournament applications are very limited, and it puts the heavier guy at a huge disadvantage, whereas in practice I think it has a ton of benefits. Now, King of the Table serves several purposes, especially in practice, but one of those purposes is to establish that you are the swinging dick in the room and everyone else needs to understand your alpha hood. Reason number one is if you have a, uh, you know, a big guy on the team and he's miles beyond everybody else, chances are good that during practice he's just not getting the workout that he could be getting. King of the Table pretty much guarantees that at some point in practice, you will lose. So the big swinging dick, who never gets beaten, when he plays King of the Table, will eventually take an L. And taking an L is very important, especially in training. Um, I think it makes you a stronger, better arm wrestler. The whole steel in the forge kind of thing. And granted, there are several ways that the big guy can take an L. Um, one way is to double hand the guy. So sometimes when I'm editing something, I realized that I, in the midst of my ramble, have said something extremely gay. So I want you to pay close attention to my reaction right here. Um, one way is to double hand the guy. Double hand the guy. Yeah. Yeah. One way is to put on a strap. Wrap the strap around your offhand. Um, and my team and I do this uh, a lot. I get a lot of benefit out of it when they, you know, use two opposing hands. It makes me have to work a lot harder. But there's something unnatural about that. Um, you're training pressures in ways that you won't feel that pressure in a real match, which kind of bothers me a little bit sometimes. King of the Table, on the other hand, is a much more natural way to lose. Uh, it's one hand versus one hand. You're going to feel the exact same pressure, the rotation, the supination, all that stuff. Uh, it's going to be just like it would be in a real match. So that's why I think King of the Table is the better alternative. It's not always the more time effective alternative. Sometimes it's easier to just get a dude and give him the rip on your fucking arm. But with King of the Table, you are guaranteed a loss. I mean, anytime you got 70 dudes running through you. Now reason number two, and arguably the more important reason, is that when you... God, my wife is being very fucking loud. <laughs> I hope she doesn't watch this. Uh, what was I saying? It gives a weaker guy a chance to beat a stronger opponent. And that's something that usually they're just not going to be able to do. Um, even when you're being super squishy, if you're levels above dude, he's probably just not going to be able to beat you, ever. Or at least, you know, in any reasonable time slot. What this does is it gives the other guy an opportunity to feel what it's like to have a stronger opponent on the A side. Uh, so maybe your hand is still fresh, but your biceps are giving out, or the opposite. And so the weaker guy is getting an advantage uh, that he would not otherwise have, and he's finally getting to feel what it's like to pin you, to pin the stronger guy. He, um, and I think you can learn a lot about shoulder press, especially. Uh, when you have a stronger opponent on the A side, on your side. 
Now, something we have to talk about that is very important, especially if you've never played King of the Table and you see this video and you're going to want to start playing. Um, King of the Table can lead to a ton of fucking injuries. So you have to be sensible with it. Um, if I'm talking to the big guys right now. If you're feeling weird, if you're feeling off, just quit and go back to normal practice. Or a lot of guys save this game for at the end of a practice anyway. So maybe if you're feeling weird, if something's not right, just give it up and call practice and call it a day. Now I'm talking to the weaker guys when I say this next part. If the big guy has you in a spooky position, just drop. You're going to get another chance when you guys go around anyway. So don't fight uh, for, you know, the win if you're in a really fucked up position or if you're, you know, it's not worth it. He's stronger than you. He's going to hurt you. So just give it up. Like I said, you'll get another go around um, when the team runs through the dude. Swing of dicks. Do not hit. Um, the point of this exercise, the point of this game is for you to get a killer workout, right? So if you're hitting through everybody, all you're doing is doing damage to yourself, basically. You're not getting anything out of it. They're not getting any anything out of it. So hitting completely fucking defeats the purpose. Um, what you should be doing, is especially if um, if you're going to be at the table for a good long while, if you're if you're way ahead of your whole team, you hold center of table, count to five, one, two, three, four, five, and then you slowly descend. However, it is you plan to win. Not only is that much safer for both you and the other guy, um, you're going to get a ton better workout. You're going to feel way more taxed holding a dude for five seconds and then pinning and doing that 45, 70 times, however, you know, however many times it takes you to lose. Um, it's just a, a million times better workout. So in summation, if you've got a team and you've got five or six or 10 or 20 guys on the team, uh, don't be a pussy. Also, if you're going to play this game, don't be a dick. <laughs> the point of the point of practice, the point of this game, in practice, is to get a good workout for all of us. Uh, whether you're the big guy or the little guy, we both want to have an effective workout, and this is a killer way to do it that will make gains on both parts if you play it right. Thanks for watching, guys. Sorry for my disappearance. Um, I've been dealing with a lot of like health shit and family shit, and it just it is what it is. Um, but I'm back. Uh, WAL 401's tomorrow, so I think everybody that I know is excited about that shit and uh, believe there will be fucking, you know, video commentary on that thing. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm Wes Bjornsson, this is The Grip, and I hope to catch you next time.